Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Now here's today's episode. Welcome to this week's episode of Life Without Baggage. I'm glad that you came back for another episode this week. So I started talking about self-rejection and self-acceptance last week. Today I'm going to focus more on healthy self-acceptance. Now a few months ago I talked about the psychological aspects of building self-confidence. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit more about spiritual resources we have to build a solid sense of self-acceptance, self-confidence. Circumstances, they're up and down, aren't they? And so it's really important that we have a solid sense of self that isn't overly dependent on our circumstances or on how the people around us are behaving. So today, as we're looking at the spiritual resources we have in Jesus Christ to build self-acceptance, to build a solid, stable sense of self, I'm going to talk about understanding our position, understanding our purpose, and understanding our power. You like how I got those three Ps in there? So First, let's talk about our position. Now, I'm going to read a little section from my devotional book, Sheep Hear His Voice. And when we're thinking about our position in Christ, who we are in Christ, the Bible actually says that we have been adopted. I don't know if you know that. We have been adopted by God himself. So this is from page 32. For you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption as children by which we cry out, Abba, which means daddy. That's Romans 8, 15. When a person is adopted, they permanently receive the rights and responsibilities of the new family. There's a permanent change in that person's status. In fact, In ancient times, a person was chosen for adoption to make sure that there was an heir who could manage the family estate. Adoption was an upgrade in status. There are many people, especially those who had a parent who was hard to please, think we have to work like a slave to please God and to keep him from getting angry at us. We don't understand that when we come to Jesus, we are transferred forever from our natural condition into a supernatural status. We become a child of God. God didn't adopt us to become his slaves. He adopted us to live in another realm and to reign with him. So you probably know that Jesus is known as the good shepherd. That's in John chapter 10, verse 11. He is not known as the good slave driver. A slave has to work like a dog and take abuse. The Lord doesn't want us to think like slaves who are always working and who are afraid of their master. So those are some examples from scripture that talk about the fact that we have been adopted, that we have we, we got an upgrade in our status and we are taken out of the natural realm, out of our natural state of, of sin and despair. And we are positioned in Jesus Christ and our spirits become alive. And that allows us to have the power of God, the resurrection life of Jesus Christ flowing in us. I think that's from the book of Romans. 
And I mentioned, I think in the last episode, that Psalm 25, 14 talks about how the Lord entrusts his secrets to those who follow him. So not only are we taken out of the slave market of sin, but we are positioned in Jesus Christ. We become a friend. We're not a slave and we don't need to be afraid. Now, why don't we enjoy our position more? Well, I would say some of it is our focus. What do we focus on? If you think about a camera, whatever the lens focuses on, that's what comes in to the camera. That's what makes the impression. So likewise, what we focus on, if we focus on the things that are wrong with us, if we focus on the things we don't like, if we focus on the people who have hurt us in the past, then we won't be living out of our spiritual position in Jesus Christ. Most likely, we will be drowning in our emotions. We will be repeating negative thoughts. We will be digging the hole deeper. And then the next time that something happens, we're going to let that define us. So we, we want to be able to understand the position we have once we receive Jesus as our Savior. And understanding that position, it allows us to shift our focus. Psalm 1914 says, may the words of my mouth, what we say, and my meditation, thoughts, and every movement of my heart be pure and pleasing, acceptable before your eyes, my only redeemer, my protector, God. And we're told in another place in scripture to take every thought captive. So we choose what we focus on. We choose what we dwell on. So we can't stop things from entering our minds. But I've I talked about in the episode on self-criticism, we want to gently shift when we notice we're going down a negative path. We want to gently shift into the truth, into what is lovely, what is good, the way God views us, not the way we view ourselves. So that's an overview of our position. Now let's think about our purpose. So if you know the story of Mary and Martha, that's from the Gospel of Luke, Jesus was visiting Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus. It looks as though he would go over there a lot to visit. And Martha was in the kitchen getting everything ready, I guess, for lunch. And Mary was sitting with Jesus and just listening to him and enjoying his presence. So Martha comes out, maybe you know this story, and she says, Lord, why don't you make her help me? I'm doing this all by myself. And so what I would have expected Jesus to say is, hey, Mary, go help your sister. But that is not what Jesus said. Jesus said that Mary was doing what she needed to do. And so that means that Jesus likes our company He's not as interested in what we are doing as whether or not we're cultivating our connection with him. So first time I read that, I was shocked. It's like, wow, that is not at all how I thought God thinks. But he created us for connection with him, not to be his slaves. So I don't know how that compares with how you view God but that was like shocking to me the first time that I, I read that passage. And it still kind of surprises me when I go back to it. It's like, Jesus is nothing like how we picture him. Now, I don't want to negate the fact that we do have a purpose in that we are given spiritual gifts. And so regardless of whether you're a mom or a grandmother or you're a professional or a business person, there may be ways to use your gift in your community of faith, but also where you work. You know from listening to these episodes that I love to pray for people. And some of my clients allow me to pray for them. So I'm able to incorporate the things that I do with my spiritual gifts and spiritual interests. So we want to understand that 
we don't want to just feel good and live for ourselves. Most people who listen to this podcast aren't going to do that. But we also want to have a perspective that while we're on earth, we have a purpose. And it's not just to be happy, although joy is a fruit of the spirit. It's also to help build the kingdom of God. So I'm going to tell a little story on myself. There are times that I ask the Lord, hey, why am I doing this? Thinking about something I'm doing that maybe is a certain amount of effort, not always fun, sort of a discipline. And sometimes the Lord just kind of reminds me, are you building your kingdom or mine? It's like, hmm, that's a good point. (laughs) And so there are many things I do that give me joy, but there are some things I do because the Lord wants me to do them. And so I want to have a good attitude, but I want to build his kingdom. When when my life is over, when I go to heaven, I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. So God didn't create us to be slaves, but he did give us gifts that we are designed to use and using the gifts will give us joy, and will build God's kingdom and fulfill part of the purpose for being on earth. I'm going to read to you from John chapter 15. This is the Passion Translation, and I'm starting in verse 8. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my Father. I love each of you with the same love that the Father loves me. You must continually let my love nourish your hearts. So you see in in those verses, Jesus talks about our purpose and that a sign of maturity is that we don't just live for ourselves. We're, We're doing things that build the kingdom. But that love that he has for us, it's the same love that the Father has for Jesus Christ. Again, I'm going to say that again. That is mind-blowing. The love that Jesus has for us is the same love that the Father has for Jesus. And that love isn't related to whether we're mature, whether we're making good decisions, whether we're building the kingdom. But it is a sign of maturity when we don't just think about ourselves. If you think about that with your own children or grandchildren, You know they're growing up when they're not just thinking about wanting some candy or to watch Sesame Street or whatever it is that kids watch now, I SpongeBob, Um, but that they start to think about others and they want to be a help. So that addresses some things about our purpose. So now I want to talk about our power. So we have power because we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. So you can ask every day, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Ephesians chapter 5, 17 and 18 says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. So if you think about it, so if you think about it, if you've ever um, had too much to drink or seen someone who has had too much to drink, their personality is altered, usually not in a good way by the alcohol. It sort of changes them. It influences them. Likewise, when we allow the Holy Spirit to fill us, then our personalities are energized in the best possible way. So we're not necessarily going to be dominated by our own worries, our own appetites, our own imbalances. But over time, if we keep yielding to the Lord, if we allow him to influence us, if we cultivate our relationship, if we confess our sin, then we are transformed, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, from glory to glory. And it's easier to like yourself when you're not always doing something stupid, right? Also in 1 John chapter 5, it says, this is the victory that overcomes the world. If you live long enough, there's going to be things that you have to overcome. If you don't believe that you can overcome some kind of loss or setback or rejection or disappointment, you'll stop living in a lot of ways. You'll just you'll just be going through the motions. 
And it's easy for that to happen if something very painful has happened, some catastrophe, uh, a death of someone you love. There are lots of things that can just turn us upside down. On earth, there's always going to be some things that aren't right. And so if we learn how to access the presence of God and the power of God through cultivating that connection through God's word, through time in his presence, asking his spirit to fill us, we gain the power to overcome. Now, we're not designed to overcome all by ourselves. There is a ministry that I follow. It's called Glory of Zion. And the pastor is Chuck Pierce. And a number of years ago, they talked about how battles were won and how soldiers were protected. And back in, I guess it's Roman times, that they would each have this enormous shield, the size, like the, the height of their of their body. And they would put their shield in front of them. But they also would be in order, in line together, side by side by side, and then row upon row upon row. And each person had their shield in front of them. And then their shields provided shielding for each other. So their shields were locked, you could say, so that there was a solid wall of protection in front of each warrior. So this is our example of we won't overcome by ourselves. You need people you can trust, even if it's just one or two other people. I have a couple of people in my life that if I'm not sure about something or if I'm struggling, I can send them a text I can send them a prayer request. I can just leave them a message. It's like, hey, this is not a good day, blah, blah, blah happened. And they will pray for me. They will lock their shield with mine so that I can keep going. And sometimes I can tell there's people praying for me because this is changing. And other times it's just reassuring to know there are people who pray for me and they're going to ask me, how did this go? So you want to make sure that you have your shield locked with one or two other people with a community of faith that will help you overcome because we're not designed to do it alone. I want to give you another example of the power that we have in Jesus Christ. I heard this as part of a sermon. Uh, Pastor Mike Ranieri used this example. And he, I, if I'm remembering this correctly, he talks about this, this boy who goes hunting with his dad. And the boy encounters a bear that he didn't expect to run into. And he's frozen in fear. And he's just looking at this bear, wondering if he's going to get eaten. And the bear's coming towards him. And then the bear stops. And then the bear walks away. And then the boy realizes his dad had been behind him. And his dad had his rifle ready if he needed to get rid of the bear, to protect his son. So sometimes we're not aware of the way God is protecting us, that he has our back, that he's with us, that we don't go through things alone. Sometimes we need reminded. He says in Hebrews, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So even if you're disgusted with yourself, God does not forget you. And he's there for you when you need him. I'm going to share one more thought with you about our power. And that is in the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 20. Jesus talks about faith and speaking to a mountain. So we all have mountains that we are dealing with, challenges. And we can speak God's word. We can declare God's word many times Over my life, I decree God's order. God is a God of order. I decree God's order and God's peace over my day, over a situation. I ask for his order. I decree his order. When things are chaotic and stuff is breaking or not working, I just decree God's order over my computer, (laughs) over whatever it is. 
You can decree it over your day. So those are some thoughts to encourage you to use your spiritual resources, your position in Christ, the power of God, and the purposes of God to help you understand who you are so that you live a life that is full and satisfying. There'll be ups and downs. There's no way around that. But that you won't lose hope and you'll continue to move forward regardless of what the people around you are doing or what what is happening in your circumstances. So let me pray a blessing for you. Lord, we thank you that we are not on our own, that it's not up to us to grit our teeth and figure out how to live the Christian life. So I pray that the things that I have shared today would empower the listener to walk forward, knowing their position, walking in their purpose, and enjoying the power they have in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. Thank you so much for listening. And I would love to hear from you what you're learning, if it's helping you, how it's helping you. I love your feedback. So talk to you soon.